What do you think? Do I look the part? Do I look cool enough to ride that? Meet the Java 42 Boba, one of the coolest looking motorcycles on sale today. A modern take on the Java Perak, distinguished with its all LED lighting, console and switch gear from the SD Scrambler, new rear brake light which sits on the rear fender instead of being part of the seat like on the Perak, and of course, this bright dual tone paint scheme and chrome finish on the engine instead of the blacked outlook on the Perak. The question is, does it have the go to match its looks? There's only one way to find out. Now this bottle is the same 334cc single from the Perak, so makes the same 30.6 PS, 32.7Nm of torque. But the difference lies in the way all this artillery is dished out. The first thing you notice on the barber is how responsive the throttle is. Look at that. So Java have done a commendable job in improving the fueling, which was definitely the Achilles heel of the SD Scrambler and the SD Adventure. I mean, this is still not perfect, especially at constant throttle in the lower revs. It's still quite jerky. But then again, that's going to be the tough part riding the bobber at constant throttle because all you want to do is this and that's down to the stupendous mid-range that the bobber packs there's so much torque low down and the top end is not bad either because the bobber will still keep charging even past 120 kilometers per hour but then at those higher revs is when the mechanical clatter of the engine makes it known that the engine doesn't really like this flogging and now to the pegs which can definitely do with weights and rubber mounting to keep the vibes in check another aspect which makes the bobber so engaging to ride is how beautifully the torque curve has been matched to the gear ratios and how silky smooth the 6-speed transmission is to operate. And then this also gets a slipper clutch, which the Perak did not get, which means the clutch is nice and light to operate. And also you have a lot more control when you're going down the gears aggressively. Also on the braking front, I love the Continental ABS system. It's a lot less intrusive compared to the Bosch ABS system. But yeah, in terms of overall braking performance, I think the bobber can do with a little more stopping power. And then there's the handling. I have no idea how a motorcycle this long, we're talking 1485 mm, to be agile. The weight distribution is pretty much spot on. The weight lies low down, which makes this really nimble. I was genuinely surprised how easy it was for me to carve through traffic on the bobber. And the fact that this only weighs about 185 kgs wet means that uh, it's also a ton of fun when you're hustling it in corners up in the mountains. But yeah, I mean, let's not get carried away. That's not what this motorcycle is made for. You start grazing the pegs in no time. And that's okay because the revised ergonomics, the revised ergos have made the bobber surprisingly comfortable to ride so now as compared to the Perak the foot pegs are more front set so that you have more room for taller riders to sit on then you also have the handlebar which is flatter and now sits on this risers so you have a more upright uh, riding position and then you have the seat which has been completely redesigned it's a good size has a good amount of padding and it's also adjustable you have two different positions to make the riding stance even more comfortable But I know what you're thinking, and you're right. 
Barbers have always been about form over function. And most of the time, in that pursuit, it's always the right quality which takes a hit. So even with the 42 Barber, if you look at the way the rear shock is mounted, the angle at which it is mounted, it is not as effective as a shock which is mounted in its traditional position. So when I took it out for a spin with the preload in the stock setting, the ride quality was almost a deal breaker for me. It barely provided any damping whatsoever or broken roads. But once we had dialed in the preload, we finally got it working to a point where, you know, it was manageable. Yeah, you could live with it. Don't get me wrong, I mean, you'll still have to slow down a fair bit over broken roads. But over the normal roads, with all the undulations, it did just fine. So another thing to note from a practical standpoint is the fact that the bobber is clearly not made for longer distances. The seat, as comfortable as it is, you're kind of sat in the same position, which means over longer distances, your butt is going to go now. And then, of course, this is a single seater. There is no pillion seat, which means mounting your luggage is going to be a problem. And you only get a 12.5 litre tank, which will only take you to about 270 kilometers before you have to stop, which means there's going to be a lot of fuel stop. And lastly, and most importantly, you're looking at a bike with spoke wheels, tube type tires, and no centre stand, which means punctures are going to be an ordeal. Now, how open you are to accept these quirks will depend entirely on the intent of your purchase. The 42 Baba is never going to score very high when it comes to practicality, but it will turn heads like no other motorcycle will. It will surprise you with its agility and how engaging it is to ride. And is guaranteed to ignite a war between your mind and your heart with its 2.09 lakh rupee price tag. <laughs>